290. Calculate the Fe3 plus equilibrium concentration when 0.0888 moles of K3FeCN6 is added to a solution with 0.0.00010 molarity of Cn minus. Okay, this is something new. Uh, if mathematics and the decimal system has changed, please let me know. But uh, in order for this question to work, I'm going to pretend that this first, uh, you know, the first zero dot is a mistake. So now we just have 0 0.00010 molarity. Okay, so they're looking for the equilibrium concentration of Fe3+, and I see that I have some type of ionic compound here. Now this one seems a little bit intimidating. There's a lot going on here. But remember, ionic compounds or salts are always going to break down into two components, the positive and the negative ion, right? The cation and the anion. Now just know that potassium, potassium always wants to be a plus charge. And then it looks like all of this is grouped together as one big thing. It has those big brackets, right? Now, this component, the FeCN6, that's a complex ion. And that means that if we have to figure this question out, we had to go in the back of the textbook to find out what the formation constant is, the Kf, uh, for that specific complex ion. So I found FeCN6 in the back of the textbook, and that Kf value is 2.0 times 10 to the 43. So let's first use our mole ratios to find out they gave us the total moles of the ionic compound. I just want to know how much is in that specific um, complex ion. So we have K3, Fe, Cn, 6. So just like we said before, the break has to be between the potassium and that complex ion. So if we break this down, I get K, and K is in group one, potassium is always gonna be a plus one charge. And then we have the Fe, Cn, six. And if you wanted to find that charge out, you could always use your subscripts to crisscross back up. So since there was three potassiums, this three went to the charge for the FnCn6, and that's a three minus. If you did want to balance, there were three potassiums, so we do need three in front of here. However, we don't care about the potassium because that's not part of the complex ion. So in the beginning, there was 0 0.0888 moles of the entire ionic compound. And use your ratios. Since there was only one of the huge compound and in that one compound, there's only one of the complex ion, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So that means that whatever the moles you had here broke down into the same amount of moles for that complex ion. So I have 0 0.0888 moles of just the FeCN6 three minus. Now, when we're dealing with Kf values, remember when we use that formula, we have to have molarities. But if I read this question over again, they don't give me you know, how much of a uh, volume we're in, right? So I'm going to have to assume here that we are in one liter. I can assume that because they gave me a molarity for the CN minus, and molarity, remember, is equal to moles divided by liter. So we can assume that if this is the molarity, I can say that it's this number divided by one, and then it would be over one liter. So the same thing here, I'm gonna say, okay, I got 0 0.0888 moles. If I just put that over the one liter, that turns into molarity. Okay, so we got that going on, right? 0 0.00888 molarity. Now let's write out that balance equation. Remember KF, F stands for formation. You're forming this compound. And thankfully, in this question, they do give you the two components that will make up that complex ion. So we have Fe, three plus, plus the Cn minus. That's gonna come together at equilibrium because we're dealing with K values to form this complex ion. Now you don't really need that big bracket in there. I'm just gonna say that, you know, Fe, Cn, six with the three minus. Just make sure that this equation's balanced we had three 
cyan uh, sorry, not three, six cyanides. So I do have to put a six in front of here. And now it seems like this equation's balanced, so we're good to go. Okay, now they did say that we have to find that equilibrium concentration when that mole, aka the molarity, is added to the 0 0.00010 molarity. So it seems like they're talking about things that are happening in the beginning. You in, Initially, you added two things together. So in this case, they gave us initial values. And whenever they give us initial values, we have to write out an ice table. Oh yeah. So let's make that chart. ICE. And right before we do our numbers, always just make sure that you're writing down the states. They're all charges. So that means that they're going to be aqueous. So in this case, everyone's aqueous. Everyone's going to be included in that KF equation. Okay. So I stands for initial. They initially told me that since I had the 0 0.0888 moles, we came down to saying that it was 0 0.0888 molarity of just the complex ion. That's over here. So we're starting off with 0 0.0888 molarity here. And we also have 0 0.00010 molarity of CN minus. So that's over here. So 0 0.00010 for the CN minus, they did not say that we started off with any iron, so I'm gonna have to say that's zero. C stands for change. So this is the normal just way of how we're, you know, we've been doing the change for the past two chapters, right? If you spot out a zero, you could only go up from there. So this side would have to be, you know, this side would have to be plus X, and I say plus X because there was only one iron, so it'd be plus one X, but that's the same thing as plus X. But now just make sure you have a six here. So this would also have to be positive, but now it would be plus six X. And then going to the product side, I have one of the complex ion. And if this side is increasing, this side has to decrease. So this would be minus X. And then equilibrium, you're just plugging all of them at the same time. So your initial plus your change. So this would be zero plus X, so that would just be X. This would be 0 0.00010 plus 6X. And then this would be 0 0.0888 minus X. And now we have our three equilibrium values that we're going to plug in into our KF expression. So I'm going to pull this over, over here, and maybe I will just start, maybe I'll pull this over a little bit over here, just so that we have a little bit more room. And now let's go for it. KF equals, remember any K value is always products over reactants. They're all aqueous, so everything's going to be included. So I have the Fe. CN six, three minus divided by the two reactants, Fe three plus times CN minus, raise them to the coefficients. I only see that I have a six in front of the CN, so the CN concentration has to be raised to the sixth. Okay, KF, that's the, the number that we found at the back of the textbook, 2.0 times 10 to the 43. The complex ion is 0 0.0888 minus X. Fe3 plus is just X and CN minus is 0 0.00010 plus 6X. Now, whenever you see that these values have a number and then minus X or a value plus X, if we keep those X's in there, that means that we're gonna have to do the quadratic equation. And we try to assume before we try to do any heavy math. So the reasoning behind what we're going to do is based off of the KF value. Since this KF value is so large, it's 10 to the 43rd. That means that at the end of the day, we should just have mostly products, right? So this number would probably be very, very close to what we started with, right? So the change here isn't going to be great. 
the drop is probably going to be so small that we don't even see it. And therefore, if this change is small, these are also small. So at the end of the day, you're probably going to end up with the 0 0.00010 molarity of the CN minus. Because that plus 6x, even though you're times it by 6, it's still going to be a very, very small value. So we can assume that we can get rid of the minus x and the plus 6x and say that at the end of the day, the change isn't going to be great and it's probably just going to be those two values. Once we get our x value, we basically just do the 5% rule just to see if we assumed correctly and then we go on our merry way. So let's solve this and let's just see what we get for x. So 2.0 times 10 to the 43rd equals products over reactants, so 0 0.0888 divided by, we have x times 0 0.00010, that's still raised to the sixth, so I have to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cross multiply, right? You can do this to the sixth first and then cross multiply. I'm just going to try to do it in one shot. I believe in your, your guys' algebra skills. Let's see if we get the same answer. So the right side would still be equal to 0 0.0888. And now let's see what we get. So I'm going to do 0 0.0001 raised to the sixth and then times that by 2 times 10 to the 43rd. So I get 2 point, we'll say 2.0 times 10 to the 19th. And that's times by x, because the x goes along with it. Solve for x, I just want to divide each side by the 2.0 times 10 to the 19th. 2.0 times 10 to the 19th. This will cancel. And now we're just left with x. So 0 0.0888 divided by that answer. And sig figs. Uh, seems like two sig figs at the end because this one has two. So 4.4, 4. 4.4 4. times 10 to the negative 21. Now, before we even tag on a molarity value here, let's just do the 5% rule. 5% rule just means that you take your X value and divide it by basically the smallest value that you have initially, which would be this one. So I'll take the 4.4 times 10 to the negative 21st and divide it by 0 0.00010 and times it by 100. If this value is five or less, we assumed correctly and the X value that we got is sticking. So I'm just doing it quick now. And yeah, we're, we're nowhere even near 1%. So we assumed correctly, we surpassed the 5% rule and I'm going to stick a molarity value here and call this as my x value. But is this my answer? Well, let's see. We always go to go back to what they're asking for. They said calculate the Fe3 plus equilibrium. So the Fe3 plus equilibrium was just x. So in this case, if we did just say that the Fe3 plus was just x, the x value that we got is the answer. 4.4 times 10 to the negative 4.4 4 times 10 to the negative 21st, and that's molarity. And that's the answer. So that's your equilibrium iron concentration. Really, really, really small. Okay. I really hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out, and I will be seeing you in future lessons. Have a great day. Bye-bye.